Check these out, they're shiny. I'll spare you the complexities of the unboxing of the FD5s. I mean, there was nothing particularly unique about what was inside, but there was this nice big leather chunky case about the size of the case of the FH7s that it came with. Actually bigger, in fact, and it was nicely felt lined with a couple of Velcro inserts for putting your in-ear monitors in while you curl the cable behind them. Pretty good setup. Also your usual set of tips, but also uniquely you had a variety of... Uh, bits and pieces associated with it, some nozzles and an interesting connector remover which we've seen from another brand. So let's take an actual look at that with the in-ear monitors themselves. Now that little thing, removal thing, I saw with Final Audio, the A8000s, it's very handy for getting the getting these connectors off. And I've had a lot of MMCX connectors where you wiggle them and everything, you can't get them off. But this pops off even the most stubborn ones. Once you get in there, it literally just pops off with ease actually it popped off easier than once you get it in position it's very very easy to get the uh, connector off because it pushes it straight up you've got your typical mmcx connector there and um, with this nice you know steel in-ear monitors a nice steel kind of barrel on the plug the only problem that's come up is the paint has the r mark has kind of faded already just from a bit of polishing but it's red so that doesn't really matter you can easily tell the difference between red and black and so, well, it looks like a kind of, the design looks a bit like a poor man's Sony IER-Z1R, this big, big kind of uh, metal design, but it's very classy, if it kind of a bit heavy. And I, not too heavy for me for listening, because, you, you know, it hangs on your ear with this, you know, preformed kind of plastic sheath, which you get on in-ear monitors nowadays. But the nice thing is on the other end of the cable, if you want to, say, go from one connector to the other, is that this regular-looking plug is actually... A, a removable plug. You give it a bit of an unscrew, and then now this is with the hard part. It's actually very firm, and with a big, you'll have to actually pull pretty pretty hard. You have a removable plug system, and it's if you have already used a plug system like that, I'll reach over in the little container I have here. They actually have a right angle one on some of their aftermarket cables, and it uses well pretty much the same connector, but they're not compatible unfortunately, so you can't use. So they're not compatible, but all the same, it means you just say if I want to get the 3.5 in here, well then I just line, there's a little notch to line that up, and then I give it a firm push, and then once that screws on easily all the way, you know you're, you're right to go, and it's not really that much bigger than a regular 3.5mm plug. So pretty cool, maybe not quite as small as Dunu's kind of setup, which I've used as smaller and neater plugs, but still all the same, pretty fantastic and I think a nice system to have. And if you wanted a right angle plug, well, you may have to go with Fia's aftermarket ones, but still, you know, pretty happy with the cable it comes with. Instead of the usual aluminium choker here, you can see this one <laughs> has the Fia's already fading from a bit of rubbing, then you get this kind of little steel one. So it's kind of classy in the design, even though they're not like super expensive in-ear monitors. Now, the other thing they come with is, well, you may have heard that they have different tuning nozzles. So let's talk about the sound and my impressions because that's where things, well, as always, they get interesting. Now I've got on here, I've got the vocal tips on here, and there are a variety of tips as always, the same FIO tips you see in other, with other IEMs. By st stock they come with these balance tips, which I've got off at the moment because I was listening with the vocal tips. Your usual uh, memory foam tips, triflange if you want better isolation from the outside world, your bass ear tips, and your vocal ear tips. And these make more of a difference with a straight up dynamic driver like this than they did with the multiple balanced armature in-ear monitors such as the FA7s and, and that simply because it's the way things are but speaking of that driver of course under here you do have this removable nozzle and I do have the narrow nozzle in there that was the last one I was listening with and on a metal plate which are the, the nozzles come on you can unscrew them and screw in the uh, screw in the uh, each set as you like and they're just a straight pass through nozzle except the width is different now starting with the wide nozzle which is what comes on them with them by default the sound is kind of really super exciting very punchy kind of almost overwhelming bass which kind of turned down a bit after you know some hours of use so i kind of left them overnight for a couple of nights a couple of days and nights inside the drawer playing back music continuously out of a player and then it kind of, it was already a pretty overwhelming, but still pretty overwhelming after that. So, I mean, some of my favorite tracks, you know, the one I use for testing resolution, say uh, Jazz and the New Harmonic from David Chesky, 
That, for example, you know, lays on the bass very quite heavily. And, but, you know, the bass is pretty clean as things go. Uh, the treble is typical Fio from other stuff. It's kind of not the best, um, you know, but good all the same. And, and, you know, Fio tend to be, I always thought that, like, most of their stuff tends to be pretty good except the treble. So, for example, the FH7s had really excellent bass with their very clever bass setup, really pretty good mids. And then the treble was kind of, ah, not quite almost there. So you need to kind of go into the $1,000 plus range to get the high quality treble I would have liked. They're kind of, that's the kind of feeling. Now, you know, the, the with the back to the jazz and the new harmonic, you know, the instrument separation was okay, but not great. Kind of everything was coming, like if my fingers are the instruments, they're all coming from a kind of blobbish area in the middle. Not the most refinement. I wasn't expecting miracles, considering they're not like the most expensive in-ear monitors. And... Uh, you know, it kind of, what it lacked in refinement made up for in kind of very, you know, kind of entertainment value, much like those, uh, you know, FH3s, which were just really entertaining, if not the most refined. Same thing with Miles Davis Mystery, you know, it kind of lays on the bass a lot, but the treble was getting uncomfortably tizzy on a lot of tracks, you know, Miles Davis, um, some jazz stuff. And uh, especially when I got into the, like that, that, that track, I found Clear Blue Sky, and I'll put this in the description, that was just kind of overwhelming, and then a good Fleetwood Mac, not too much. And it was getting kind of, you know, annoying. So what I did is I thought, well, let's just try the other nozzles. I tried some other tips, and it's still much the same thing, the bass tips. It kind of darkened the treble a bit, but didn't kind of fix the issue. It just made the bass more overwhelming. The vocal tips were a bit better still, kind of you know, tuning down the bass a bit and not making it too much of a, a deal, but still that treble refinement was lacking. So I tried, you know, some aftermarket stuff and still much the same. But when I changed the nozzles, this is where things got really cool. Suddenly all that lack of refinement disappeared and all the refinement came in as if they, as if I'd bought like a pair of in-ear monitors which would double the price. And it's like, oh. So the whole time I'd been comparing them, I mean, talking with one of the guys who is one of my patrons, and he borrowed a pair from a friend as well. And I, I was thinking, because I was comparing them, let me, they remind me a lot of Campfire Audio's Atlas, which I have here as well. Now, the Atlas is kind of smaller. And if you're thinking design, it's, you know, it was uh, design left and right are exactly the same. It doesn't have the left and right that you do of the uh, FD5s. But they're, they're, they are kind of, they were the king for me for if you wanted like a very punchy, very entertaining V-shaped sound, you got these. And they did that really, very well. And so I thought, you know, maybe these are kind of, these FD5s are kind of mini Atlas. And my friend got the pair in, he loves the Atlas as well. And he said, yeah, you're exactly right. This is exactly what they're like. They're kind of like a mini Atlas. But then, you know, the Atlas doesn't have the most refined treble either. And so I thought, you know, with the wide bore nozzles, that the treble, you know, is kind of a little bit less refined than the Atlas. And the Atlas was a little bit better, but not, you know, three times the price or whatever it is better or four times, I can't remember. And... Then I switched the nozzles and all of a sudden, guess what moved ahead? These did. These, I like, I was doing A being, I had two, plug, both plugged into the amp and then I was, you know, taking one out half mid through, mid through the track and putting in the other. And I didn't want to listen with the Atlas anymore. It was just like, right, goodbye. I want to listen with these. And I was listening with them actually out of a, it's a, actually Drops new um, headphone amp, the single-ended version of their AAA 789. And as well as the AAA seven eight nine, because that's in you know the the uh, the new drop amp is in for review, and they're pretty good with in ear monitors. And so I'm gonna they'll give you some impressions of how these sounded out of a couple of different DAPs. I've got some new stuff in here, such as the uh, Kyan M N three Pro, which you can see all my beautiful finger marks over. If you want the this has uh, tubes in it, so that'll be very interesting as well. And but I just the ref, I just went through my usual you know all the tracks I've gone through before where I was thinking oh this has got tizzy treble this is kind of irritating although it was kind of entertaining with pop music and stuff like that and I thought holy cow these are much more these are, the refinement's gone up like a huge amount with the, the narrow nozzles um, you know you get a bit of a more of a U shaped sound there's still a kind of prominent treble and the, the mids are a little bit sucked out one of the nice things though that the mid range quality I really like on these is actually pretty good I get my good old you know, guitar track, Aurora, I'm not going to even pronounce it. I, if I try and pronounce Spanish, I'll screw it up. I'll put it in the description. And that just came through really nicely. Uh, and then the good old uh, Fleetwood Mac Dreams, which I really like. You know, the treble was still a bit tizzy, but the sound was much more relaxed and still very punchy. I mean, it didn't seem to lose the bass punch quite so much. And uh, back to, you know, jazz and the new harmonic, you know, the sep sep instrument separation, instead of being this blob in the middle, comes spaced out, and suddenly you got that, you know, a sense of, you know, space to the music. 
you know, the, the symbols and all that, you don't get quite that detailed high end like you do in the, say, the $2,000 IMs, like A8000 and stuff like that, or maybe Andromeda's and, you know, the mid-$1,000 to $2,000 in-ear monitors. Not quite that much refinement. But what FIO does really well, and this they proved again with the FH3s, is they make in-ear monitors that sound, at least with their dynamics and, and uh, hybrids, sound really entertaining. So now the bass was no longer, you know, Miles Davis mystery. The bass was no longer overwhelming the kind of the mids and the treble. Probably the treble was a touch too sharp, really. I mean, but with, you know, maybe it's a little bit still unrefined for jazz and classical versus, you know, high-end in monitors. If you do get a pair, put the narrow nozzle, see if you can compare the, the nozzles quickly. Now, some people might like the super exciting bitey sound out of these and i mean they were very entertaining but so if you find it fatiguing just switch to the narrow ones and these were pretty pretty awesome the only problem with using the narrow nozzles is that now half your tips are not going to fit because they're so narrow the standard tips well they were okay and they actually say in the instructions that the uh, narrow nozzles are designed to work with the triflange tips which will give you good sound isolation I've noticed that with in-ear monitors actually out and about, if you have bright in-ear monitors, that brightness tends to kind of mix with the outside sound and sound end up sounding harsher. So you actually want darker sounding in-ear monitors for, for going out and about, really. Bright ones just don't do any good. I mean, bright ones are great if you, you know, you like a bright sound and you're kind of listening in a library or somewhere like that where it's silent out side but I've tried taking bright in-ear monitors on an airplane it was just totally unpleasant and I just didn't bother so the noise cancellers for me there all the same uh, you know just to give you an overview I mean the other tips the vocal tips will still fit on fine they still they're fairly tight on the on the wide nozzle but the the bass tips are just not a chance I mean this is massive they just just fall straight off they're just not going to go uh, likewise the foam tips you'll need to probably get foam tips designed for say the sure IEMs which have a very narrow nozzle you can get other other ones from comply and any other tips that are designed for say sure IEMs will probably just squeeze on there tight fit just like the vocal tips were on the wide nozzle but you could probably get them on there and that would work as well but some of my other favorites don't work on there like the uh, spiral dots and the, even the type E just is too loose for that unfortunately so that little issue out of the way, I did kind of just use the standard tips which on the narrow nozzle, and I kind of really like that combination. And all the same, they came right all the way back around to sounding, well, much like a FIO pair of in-ear monitors, like, say, the FH5s, where, you know, the bass is really good. The mids are still really excellent on these, considering, you know, they're not uh, super high-end. And they, but the treble is still kind of typical. There's some harshness came out even in regular tracks and some, you know, uh, sibilance and that kind of thing. They still kind of fairly unrefined treble. And it didn't always come out as a problem, but, you know, it would just show it's kind of, you know, you get some nasty sibilance pop up here and there, and that was a little bit unpleasant. And, well, yeah, probably actually you've seen that I've changed the cable at the moment, is that's because I wanted to evaluate them with different types of gear. And say, for example, Fio's got old BTR5, which I've got here. And that still has a 2.5 millimeter connector on there, which will hopefully be abolished in the future as uh, the 2.5 millimeter is on the way out and the standards are now kind of 3.5 millimeter and 4.4. But the stock cable only didn't come with a 2.5 millimeter. I don't know if one's available. So I actually Fio had already sent me this really nice copper cable. And it's a good, it doesn't, it's not like this, their silver cable, which makes everything sound really bright. It just doesn't have any uh, negative effect on the sound or seems to doesn't seem to alter the sound and I've actually used it on other IEMs where I've wanted to evaluate uh, you know things with a variety of depths as it got all three main connectors here I've got uh, 4.4 3.5 and 2.5 and these just pop you know on and off pretty easily and they're right angled and they're easy to use so that I just changed it over and, and even though it doesn't look <laughs> quite so pretty to cut this combination maybe they should offer this cable with silver bits but anyway um it actually worked really well out of the btr5 out of the balanced output you know better than i was expecting i tend to find dynamic driver in-ear monitors like this i mean they obviously has a lot of bass out of a desktop amp and that's what i was using and with weaker amplification i mean these only need 100 milliwatts of power but all the same you still do notice especially with portable gear which has a weaker output that the uh, you know that you get a bit of a bass drop off first more than anything, and that was the kind of tendency with portable gear. But the other thing is in evaluating in ear monitors, if you get a variety of of players, so I've got the BTR5, and the next thing up I've actually got this uh, uh, Kain, you know the uh, N3 Pro in for review, and I've got uh, just what I reviewed recently the uh, 
in the um, Hybe R6, for example. And these, uh, these, you know, as you go up kind of a range, this is kind of similar priced, but I mean, as you go up a range of players, you kind of try a pair of in-ear monitors as you, you know, going, going up from, you know, cheap stuff up to more expensive stuff. And you see how far you go before you stop noticing an improvement. And the kind of note where I noticed, uh, I mean, I have other cheaper players I can use with this, but the, the, where it's kind of stopped was with the high BR6 kind of level player. So this was, you know, a noticeable jump up still from something like, say, a BTR5 or like an M5 or one of the small players. And, you know, there was, you know, a little bit of difference between these because this is uh, optionally a, a tube amp inside, which is what we'll talk about in its own review. But, you know, the noticeable like increase in punch and kind of, uh, you know, detail coming out was really noticeable going up to the R6 from the, the cheaper stuff. And so actually, considering this is, you know, these are $300 and this is like way more than $300, actually these scale up, you know, quite well above their, their price point because you'd normally consider that something you'd, you'd buy equipment roughly, that roughly the same price point should have about the same performance. You know, you have a DAP that's, you know, around the $700 mark, $650, $700 or whatever, and you have in-ear monitors that should be about around that price and then etc etc but it, with in ear monitors i mean the, the fios tend to punch above their price point and they certainly did with these and so that was kind of where i ended up with these you know they have they they have you know taken over the atlas in my for my super entertaining single dynamic driver in ear monitors and they're just extremely punchy and ex, uh, you know extremely fun to listen with maybe a bit too much a bit too aggressive still with the uh, the wide nozzles but still, you know, once I put the narrow nozzles on, I found them kind of quite listenable, except for that there's occasional, occasional moments of, of treble harshness. And apart from like some small niggles, like this cable just became entangled like so readily. <laughs> I had to entangle it so many times before shooting this video. And maybe, you know, they're heavy. Some people won't like that. The fit should be fine for, I think, for most people. I mean, being round, they're comfortable. You know, there's some small things. If you prefer the narrow nozzles, you may have to get some alternate aftermarket tips if you don't want to use a tri-flange. You know, other than some, some minor stuff, there I think they did pretty excellently and for 300 bucks, yeah. So I hope that gave you a good overview. Don't forget, before you go, is that uh, these videos are supported by, well, people such as yourself. And if you'd like my early impressions, you'd like help buying gear, you'd like to, um, you know, influence what I review, you'd like my feedback, you'd like to interact with, with me in general and, you know, help me out and I'll happily help you out. And uh, let's make some more, you know, get some more good straightforward reviews of gear going so thanks once again thanks to everyone for supporting my videos and uh, i look forward to seeing you online